In this video, I will attempt to provide an informal understanding of the difference between risk appetite and risk tolerance. I have easily read in excess of 50 papers, reports, websites, and articles that claim to define and describe risk appetite. A good many of them promise to distinguish risk appetite from risk tolerance while assuring the reader of the vitality of both these concepts to enterprise risk management. My conclusion is that these are not well-defined or well-understood notions, despite the full-color brochures and impressive-sounding credentials of the authors. Risk appetite and risk tolerance sound like the same thing half the time, and they sound like vague things the other half of the time. I can impress you with the range of definitions of risk appetite, and I'll make an honest effort to represent what's in the literature so that you may feel free to define these terms as you best see fit. Here, however, I simply want to help you develop a notion of the difference between the two terms, and I'm going to use some examples to try to instill that understanding. Feel free to pause the video for a moment and examine some of the definitions found in the literature. Here, by the way, are some references for the definitions found in the literature. Let's start with something familiar, driving, long distance interstate driving. My goal is to arrive safely and quickly at a reasonable cost. My risk appetite is to travel at a speed between 60 and 78 miles per hour. Less than 60 delays my arrival, faster than 78 makes me uncomfortable and it increases my risk of a speeding ticket, all other things equal. This is the speed range I would prefer to accomplish my goal. Feel free to substitute objective for goal here. Don't tie yourself up in knots over how people use those words. Slower than 60 is not acceptable. Faster than 78 is not acceptable. During the course of a trip, I will tolerate wandering outside of my appetite for brief periods of time. A few spots on the, interstate and on the interstate have traffic lights, and I understand I will have to slow and stop for them. There may be times, maybe when passing a truck or two vehicles at once, when I will drive faster than 80. So I can tolerate speeds outside of this range for a while. When I do, my senses are heightened. I'm going faster or slower than I want, and if this is going to last longer than a little while, I'm going to have to slow down or perhaps find an alternate route. So my risk tolerance is wider than 60 to 78. If I specify it, I would say it's 40 to 85 miles per hour. I worry about my safety above 85, and if I see I am above that speed, I take immediate corrective action. If my interstate speed drops below 40, I'm going to look for an alternate time when traffic is not so heavy or an alternate route where traffic is flowing better. When I exceed these tolerable deviations from my appetite, I take immediate risk management steps to reduce my risk. I slow down to reduce the risk to life and safety as well as the risk of a speeding ticket. When my speed drops below 40, I act to reduce my risk of a longer and more expensive trip. Risk appetite is my preference. It is what I would prefer to do. Risk tolerance defines that region between my preferences, or appetite, and the point at which I implement risk management measures to get back within my appetite. Let's try another example with sales this time. Our objective is to increase sales. My risk appetite is to keep the change in sales between minus 5% and plus 20%. I know sales fluctuate and I know there are many factors that could result in a decrease of sales. We could survive a 5% drop relatively easily. You might think we'd have no cap on the growth side but we cannot increase sales more than 20% with our current facility. Now imagine an icy winter that sees our sales fall by 15% over a month. 
If I understand that weather affected our sales during that time period, I may not take any risk management action as I tolerate a decrease that is outside my appetite. Likewise, after the weather breaks, we may see a 30% spike in sales that we could not sustain, but we can tolerate it for a short time. Thus, my risk tolerance differs from my risk appetite. I might specify a risk tolerance as minus 25% to plus 50% for no more than one month. If my loss exceeds 25%, I will take immediate action as soon as it is exceeded. If my gains exceed 50%, I will take immediate action. If I'm below or above my appetite for more than a month, I will take risk management action. Let's examine this relationship between risk appetite and risk tolerance a couple of more ways to make sure we lock it in. Here we have the performance of a firm over time. And here is the firm's projected performance in pursuit of its objectives. If some good things happen, performance could be as high as this. But if some bad things happen, performance could drop to here. These two limits together define the risk universe of all the risks that exist. There are limits to the opportunities we will seek and the losses we will sustain. Together, these define our risk tolerance. These are the risks we will not take, that is, those between the red lines and the outer limits of the risk universe. Risk appetite, shown as the amber lines, defines the risks we want to take. Notice these are inside our risk tolerances. A firm does not want to operate outside of its appetite. For any number of reasons, it may do so for brief periods of time. If the deviation from the risk appetite is temporary and understandable, it may be tolerated for a time. But there are limits as to what a firm will tolerate. In addition, long-term deviations from the risk appetite are not acceptable. The level of risk the firm pursues is somewhere within their appetite for risk, but they may be able to tolerate or absorb a different level of risk without significant pain and impact on achieving their strategic objectives. This is their tolerance for risk. Although a firm may operate there temporarily, it will seek to return to its risk appetite by managing risks. No firm will willingly operate in the range of unacceptable risk. Once the tolerable range of risk is exceeded, the firm will take risk management action to return the risk level to within the firm's appetite. So, that is the difference between these two concepts as honestly as I can discern them. In other videos, we will stick closer to some of the official language. That is when it may help you to keep these examples in mind. Bear in mind some of the definitions out there are confusing. Some are wrong, some are useful. Unfortunately, they do not come with labels on them telling us which kind of definition they are.